Today I will show you how to find the colors in a reference photo using Photoshop. My reference is a painting by William Adolph Bouguereau, titled The Prayer. You can find this reference in the Art Renewal Center. I'll put a link in the description. I'd love for you to paint along with me. The palette prep and painting will follow this video. Look for it next week. So in Photoshop, we've cropped our reference down to just a head and shoulders. Next, we added the white box by going into Image and going to Canvas Size and adding just a couple inches to the right side of our reference photo. Then with the color picker selected, you can hover over an area of your reference photo and select a color and then move it over to the white box. Hold the B key down on your keyboard and it will paint the color there. So when you're hovering over an area of the face, you can see the color at the top of that circle of what you're hovering over. So when you see that, you have to decide, is that a dark value, a mid value, or a light value, and then place it in the appropriate spot on your white box. This could also be done even if you're working with a live uh, subject. You could actually just grab your phone, snap a pic, and then pull it up in Photoshop, and you could do a few quick color selections and you'd be able to follow along the same way. So we're going to be sampling a lot of areas on the face and we can see in the color picker circle if that color that we're hovering over is a similar color to one we've already placed down in the white box then there's no need to really place it down again. If you're not sure go ahead and place it and then you can make that decision later on. So you'll see in your sample piles, there'll be some colors that are very similar and we'll just end up grouping those together. So when we're actually making our oil palette paint mixtures, um, some of the circles will get grouped as one pile. If you place a circle down and it looks too light or too dark, then just go ahead and remove it and then put it where you think it should be. I just love doing these color analysis. It often uh, turns out that there's colors in the flesh tones that I just don't expect sometimes. Like I didn't really see that there was so many khaki and olive colors in this little girl's face. This is also a great way to see the colors used in the transitions. So if you pick a point and you color sample that area and then move just a little bit to the right or left of that spot and sample that area and then keep doing that across the face and you'll get the colors used in that transition. A lot of times beginning painters will just blend colors together to try to make transitions happen and you'll get a much better finer art result if you use actually different colors to step across into those transitions. And a transition happens when the form is turning away or towards the light and you're creating a sort of roundness giving the 2D surface some 3D effect. So the palette that we're building here is looking pretty neutral. There's a lot of uh, grays. They seem to be warm grays, but there's a lot of grays in the mid and light values especially. Now when you get more into the darker values, it gets quite a bit warmer and redder. So the other thing to notice when you're doing this is the color box on the Photoshop screen. It's going to give you a little white circle. And if that white circle is more towards the right of the box where the colors are brightest, then that is a more saturated color that you're hovering over. So as the circle moves to the left, more towards the gray areas, that's telling you that the color you're hovering over is less saturated. The color box also denotes the root colors that are being used to make the color that you're hovering over. So those uh, color at the top would be orange and that would be your root color. And now it's blue. And finally, change the image to black and white. This makes it easy to see if you've placed your colors in the correct value spot as compared to the value scale. You can see here a couple of my values were placed in the wrong spot. Welcome to my channel, Shelly J. Cox. Come along with me on my art journey. All right, we've got some color analysis done for our painting palette, but let's dig in a little deeper and see exactly what's going on here. 
So one of the things I noticed when we were doing the color picking is in the nose area, there is a lot more red. Now you can see over in the color box to the right of the screen that this is a very red and a very saturated color. Now when we compare that to the lip, a little bit darker part of the lip, so you can see the last color I picked is at the bottom part of the circle on the that little rim and then just above that is the color I'm on now and you can see just from comparing the two colors side by side there that it is less saturated red in the lips than in the nose and you can also see that is true by looking at the color box to the right and how that color moved a little bit further away from the right side of the color box which means it's a little less saturated so let's just pick this little bitty tiny nostril mid-tone color that's a little bit um, more brownish red then when we move over here into the nostril it becomes more red <laughs> I think that's interesting that the nostril is so red. So that's happening here on the light side of the face. So you have a nice saturated nostril color. But when we come over to the shadow nostril, you can see, compare the two. So this one's much, much darker, almost black. And the nostril color on the bottom part of the circle is the one in the light. You can see the two compared. It's pretty interesting, I think. So. I always um, find it interesting to see what these mid-tone colors are that happen just before you come into the shadow. So look at the top of the nose so we can see here, we'll start where it's easy. The highlight, which is almost a pure white, now we'll compare that to one step to the right so it becomes a little more fleshy, still a neutral color. And let's go a little bit further. So it's gotten a little bit darker. You compare the first spot we were on at the lower part of the circle you see, and then the upper part of the circle is the new color selection that we're looking at. And it's a bit more brown, still neutral. So let's go one more step over. So it's gotten a little bit warmer and a little bit darker. And we'll go another step. So it got lighter again. So you can see that the nose is starting to um, roll back towards some of that light that's coming over the nose just a little bit. And then we get into this highlight here. And look at that highlight. It's like a neutral, a little bit of an olive color. So the, for the highlight in the light side was pure white. And this highlight, you can see here, is more of a light greenish grayish color. So I find that interesting. And then if you come over to the cheek, so this is a type of a Rembrandt lining looks like and you've got this little spot here that's lit because the light's coming over the nose and hitting that area. But it's still on the further side of the face so it's going to be a little more saturated and have a little more color. So we can see that's a bit of a pinky color. And then compare this cheek, completely light. Uh, there's hardly any color. I'd say it's a very, very light version of that cheek in the far side. But it looks like we might find some of that color here. So let's grab it again and then compare right here. They seem very similar in color. And they are very similar, but this uh, spot on the cheek here on the light side is just a tiny bit lighter. You can see that compared in the circle. The far side colors on the bottom part of the circle and the light side of the cheek where we are now is on the top part of the circle. Another spot I like to always take a good close look at is the whites of the eye. So let's check out this spot right here. So look at that. It's blue. That's so cool. It's um, If you look at the color box on the right side of the screen, you can see it's pretty much a like an ultramarine cobalt blue right in the middle, but it's not saturated at all. Look how gray it is because the color is way far to the left of the color box. So it's 
very, very unsaturated. Now let's go right here, there's a little highlight. So it's a lighter version of that same blue color. You can see in the color box we're in the same blue area as we were. And let's just take this step here. Okay, so it's gotten a little greener and a little grayer. It's completely neutral because you can see in the color box that the color selected is all the way to the left of the color box, which means unsaturated completely. So let's go just a little further. And now it's a bit warmer and it's still gray. Very neutral in color. So as we started with the eye, we started with a, a little blue, then it got light blue, then it got blue gray light, and then it got like a green gray, and then it got like a total warm gray. <laughs> And let's check out this color right here. It's usually a nice red color right for you to the tear duct. Yeah, so it's pretty saturated. Usually shadows are more warm and more saturated, so that's sticking with that. Let's see what color her eye color is. So that's a warm brown, it's nice. Looks like there's some saturated warmth right here in this fold of the eye. Yep, so that's like a nice Browny, reddy brown color. That just got a little bit darker as we moved up into the crease. And then this little area right here that's light, like a light pink. I think it looks lighter than it actually is, so let's see what we have. Oh my gosh, look how dark that is. And it's hardly pink at all. I was seeing it as like a light pink. It is completely brown. Oh man. And then this color right here, let's see what this shadow is under the eye. Like an olive. Okay, so let's just walk across the nose and see what happens. So when you hear me talk about transitions, this is what I'm talking about. And you wanna paint your transitions with actual steps of color. So if we were painting this, we'd start here with this whitish color you see on the top of the color wheel. And we take another step. And it's pretty light still got a tiny bit um, more neutral, kind of like a porcelain beige color. Another step over, and it's gotten a little darker, but it's still a neutral, kind of a fleshy color there. And then let's step into the shadow. It's still warm, but neutral, getting a little darker, and then still yet a little darker. So if you were gonna paint that, you'd need all those paint colors you wouldn't just be blending your paint across, adding in a darker color. You wanna actually put down those colors and step them over the bridge of the nose like that we just did when we analyzed the color. So this little area in the nose here, I think we looked at that. And we've got this shadow here. It's warm, it's not quite as dark as it looks because the skin around it's so light. It's almost a mid-value. I'd say that's in our mid-value pile. That's pretty cool. So let's take a walk across this cheek. So we've got these pink color. We've got a more neutral, a little warmer brown, still brown. And then it's gonna be dark, dark. So we move into the hair. And let's see this little shadow right here that's transitioning the roll of that lip down away from the light. So in the light, just into the shadow, it's a gray, warm brown, down into the lip, got much redder, more saturated. Let's check out this ear. It's like a neutral brown, and then we move over a little bit. It didn't really get darker, it just got more saturated. So if you look here, less saturated, more saturated, but the same value, more saturated, same value. So the, the ear is transitioning, not by a change of color, light or dark, it's just transitioning by using saturated color. So that's pretty cool. Okay, this shadow right here underneath the cheek. It's on green, neutral, gray color. And it got a little lighter. 
And there's some light that's passing over this lip area here and just touching that spot. And then it's gonna get a little greener and grayer. And then it gets a little browner. So let's walk across this chin area. It's sort of a gray neutral, a little darker of the same, a little warmer brown, mm, it's still a saturated warmer color, same value, and a little bit warmer, tiny bit darker. And what's this shadow color under the chin? It's a dark brown. I'm gonna start moving out of that, it gets a little bit lighter brown. A little lighter brown, still, yeah, lighter brown, and even lighter brown. So, let's check out the hair color. So, in the light, it's a grayish color, so her hair is gray in the light areas. The super bright highlight is a light, light gray. And then move down a little bit, and it becomes green. Who would have thought we would be painting her hair this olive color? <laughs> and then what is this little bit here? It became warmer, more saturated in the shadow of the hair. You get this really nice dark bit here. A bit warmer and darker. We got some browns there. It's like a, a pretty warm patch. Yeah, nice warmth there. Wow, that's pretty bright. It's in the yellow-orange family, but the way that it's in the middle with less saturation it almost looks like an olive color. And that's sort of a greenish-brown as well. And we come over here, start moving into the shadows. Yeah, you've got that khaki sort of green color and a warm brown again. So that khaki darks. Scrap that. Look at that highlight. It is really dark. Like, I would put that in the dark values, but yet on her hair, it reads as a highlight. Look at that. That's crazy. So you have this really, really dark, and then there's that highlight. I mean, it's sort of a mid value. It could be right in that range in between the two. And then that's going to be another darker piece. And then her blouse, some grays, greeny grays, warm grays, definitely warm because we're in the shadows. So let's check out this other eye. That is like a brownish gray. And here's her highlight. That's that gray blue light color. And then gray again, a little darker gray, and a little darker gray yet. So those are warm grays. You can tell they're warm grays because in the color box we're down in the yellow uh, orange family and then the saturated color it's not saturated at all because that little color dot is moved further to the left. So it's a pretty uh, warm gray eye, except for this highlight, which is that light blue color. This eye is pretty dark, but it's still got some uh, good red into it. So when we paint these really dark areas, we want to make sure that we load those darks with some nice reds. This ear back here. Pretty, pretty warm. You can just make it out. So that is just a little further in-depth look at the color analysis. So we're going to be making our palette and you can see those colors to the right side of your screen here. And now you know that these colors are going to make up these areas of the faces that we just explored. So, all right, I think it's time to paint. Let's do it. Let's determine our starting point. I'll be using a 10 by 10 canvas board. So on the board, you wanna have a dot that will tell you exactly where you're going to start your painting. I've selected the left eye outer corner as my starting point. 
You'll need to set your zoom so that your image is the exact same size as you will be painting it. So I took a measurement on my blank canvas of where I wanted my head to go. Then I measured the head on the computer monitor. I changed the zoom until the head size matched my measurement. This way you can make direct comparisons while you paint from your starting point. There's a lot of thinking that should happen before you actually start painting. Let's use the hands of a clock to help determine some of the angles in our face. Like the tilt of the head is shown here on the 11 o'clock mark. And you can see here the angle of the eyes, nose, and mouth are coming up at the 2 o'clock mark. So with all this analytical thinking done, we're now ready to go ahead and mix up the colors for our oil paint palette. So be sure to join me next week to paint our master copy of William Adolph Bouguereau's The Prayer. Thanks for watching. See you next week.